Lee, I'm Lily Gaylor, and this is Art Watch on WCHE 1520 every Wednesday from 1 to 1.30. So happy you could join us. Today, my guests in the studio are Vicki Manning, owner of Summer Mill Manning Gallery, located at Bricks Mill in Greenville, Delaware, and artists Greg and John Mort, both of whom are featured in the current Summer Mill Manning exhibit, New Horizon. New Horizon is on view at Summer Mill Manning right now through December 23rd. Welcome, Vicki, Greg, and John. Hi, hey guys. Thank you. Very <laughs> great to be here. So, hey, I was fortunate enough to stop by the gallery this week to see the show. It's completely wonderful. Um, very excited to have you um, all here. Um, so, how long have you all known each other? I think that you've known each other a long time. Is that right, Vicki? Yes. Um, I met Greg 33 years ago when another artist, Anna B. McCoy, Andrew yeah. Wyatt's niece, mm -hmm. suggested I go see his work when we were in Maine. And um, John was five weeks old at the time. He and yes, he has. A, <laughs> sorry, we were, we were working on the future then, and then it was. Um, but it was really interesting because at the time there was a um, a poster in the house I was renting of these two shells that were facing each other, and it had Greg's name on it. And I went, oh yeah, that looks really interesting. I I would like to go see his work. And it turns out he could tell you, but he did that. He has a had twin boy and girl boy and girl twins and he did that poster before they they were um the pregnancy pretty cool stuff it is it is pretty cool so it was kind of a premonition of things to come but it yes. turned out to be a a tribute to uh my future son and daughter <laughs> that's wonderful so are all your children artists well john is an artist his his uh, sister his twin sister is actually a, in the art field she's a um, an expert on uh, vintage items, and she mm -hmm. lives in Portland, Oregon. But oh, no kidding. Yeah, oh, she, I love Portland. she has her degree in uh, the decorative arts. Oh, okay. The Smithsonian and Corcoran. It sounds pretty cool. Very cool, very wow. cool. Wow. Um, so uh, you live most of the, your time in Maine, but you also have a home in D.C.? We Is live, we live in Maryland uh, for, okay. for nine months, and we're, the rest of the time we're in, in uh, Port Clyde, Maine, which is a, a very inspirational place for artists, always has been. Is that where you do most of your painting, or um, are you, do you work both places? Well, I work both places. I have, I'm lucky enough to have studios in both places, mm -hmm. um, and I share the, the, the studio space in Maine with my son because he often comes there uh, and, and spends his summer working as well, so that's a rare treat. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I'd love it if my kids join me in anything, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, a, it's a, wonderful, a wonderful gift. We, we often have a, a conversation here here and there about a project that we're excited about or, or challenged by, but uh, for, for that part of the year to share the actual workspace and to be bouncing ideas off each other and to observe up close what's happening uh, with the other person's creative process, it, uh, for me I personally, I, I can say definitely sparks all kinds of uh, ideas and insights and you know pushes you to challenge yourself even more. Can you talk a little bit about your work um, just for the for the listeners to understand more what you do? You work with colored pencil that's very unusual. Uh, yeah, I would say I would say it, it is unusual for a fine art practice to be in to be in colored pencil. Um, I've been a, a graphical artist, uh, which is to say, with with uh, drawing utensils as my primary mm -hmm. uh, media. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did a, a degree in architecture uh, for my for my masters, and so oh, the emphasis on the the, dr the drawn component of of the work, I'd say, uh, it, it derives from there. That that fixation mm -hmm. began mm -hmm. began in that in that, that part of my my school life, um, and uh, I moved moved from graphite pencils to mm -hmm. colored pencils about about three years ago um, okay. in sort of a, a burst of, of interest in, in moving in a new direction creatively. Wonderful. Um, yeah, it, it, it's unfolded from there, and I'm, I'm in many ways a, a beginner, but a, a passionate one. Um, oh, your work is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I stopped by the gallery. Most of them are sold already, so you should really check it out. Um, <laughs> but um, So it's interesting, too. You have a, a, Is there an iconography with some of the elements in your imagery, or is this... Just, I think there's more of a story in there. Well, I, I would say that, that there's a, a symbolic element in, in almost almost all art, um, but the the narrative quality of, of my pieces is certainly the the focus of the work in in, in many ways. There's there's almost always a, a story, uh, sometimes a detailed one, and I draw from uh, everything from from uh, history, uh, the history of science and astronomy, and mm -hmm. and even mythology. There's uh, there are pieces in this show that, that draw. From 
from that tradition as well. So when there's a descriptive piece about your work, is it is it something lengthy, or do can somebody enjoy a conversation <laughs> with you to explain it, or is it not necessary? A lot of artists have lots of different opinions on this, so I'm just... Um, no, the the not real the, no, not at all. The, I I, the, I feel no judgment. Uh, the, the the real gift in in the in the process is is after my my labor on the actual creation of the the work is physically done, people will uh, occasionally approach me with their own interpretation, um, and they have they have decided uh, you know in their observation and experience mm -hmm. of the work. That uh, that there's a story that they've they've interpreted from that. That's really, in many ways, is that as, cool with you? At least as fascinating, okay, if not cool. more so, like that. Like because that. because their fresh perspective helps me see the work as as if it's for the first time, which is the real kind of that's the ultimate ultimate. That's fantasy. pretty fun. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I have I have um, my own my own driving forces, but uh, they're they're rarely. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the length of a novel. It's it's often it's often a, 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 a brief uh, and, and poetic insight. Hopefully, how about the incorporation of shel shells? Both of you seem to enjoy that. So you have shells in your pieces. Uh, yes, some, so, sometimes uh, be, because, uh, as was mentioned, the, the, yes. the, there's a, you know, a long-standing practice. Uh, uh, Vicky and, and my and my dad and my dad Greg have, have uh, known each other uh, and uh, since, since about the time I was born. Actually, some of the shells in your paintings have ended up in my drawings as well. That has happened. I kind of saw that, so I was interested in that. Sure. So it's part of a, a personal collection, but it's a shared appreciation for nature that John and I have, mm -hmm. and we love to we love to talk about science as well well as art. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as Leonardo da Vinci said, uh, art is the true daughter of science. So there's a, there's a scrutiny that takes place uh, in both fields, which is really fascinating, where you, you kind of dig down to the guts of what makes something what it is. So I think we, we both share that appreciation at that kind of almost molecular level. Um, but I, I'd like to go back a little bit to what Jonathan said, because one of the amazing things is how much the viewer brings to the picture. You know, we are a little bit like hypnotists. We make a suggestion, but the viewer brings their own personal history and experience. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the wonderful thing John was mentioning about, you know, if you could see that, that work of art through the viewer's eyes and not just your own, what a fascinating trip that would be. And with yours, particularly with the very large expanses that I saw at um, at uh, the Summer Room Manning Gallery, uh, those are interesting stories. But they're also just immediate. Oh, I mean, your your breath, you know, it's 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 wonderful to look at. But you're thinking something too when you're painting it. So I'm kind of interested in what kind what what are you observing? What are you trying to to do when you make these very large, gorgeous expanses of nature? Well, there's um, there's something that artists uh, who have success do very well, and that's a reductive um, to get to the essence of what something is. And mm -hmm. again, it's not always about just the surface of the painting, but what is, what is the message? And um, one of the reasons the, the show is called New Horizons is that um, both of us are, are in the process of evolution. He, John, my son John is, you know, four or five years into his career. I'm about 40 mm -hmm. or 45 years into my career. And yet we're still evolving because that's one of the things that artists need to do to keep alive mm -hmm. is to keep changing. So my work has actually become less detailed and more emotional, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so part of the scale, the drama and the color of the pieces that are in the show is my, you know, my new horizon, my discovery, my, my continued um, exploration of what I do. Um, how far have you been, uh, how much have you been exploring with specifically color? I was just interested to see, Rebecca pulled out some earlier pieces and there was a much different palette. That you were, well, sometimes you were working with water, watercolor as well. But um, the palette has some really strong colors. And it's, again, it seems emotion, like it's an emotional response. And the viewer feels it. It it's, is, it's too. And I, 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 there I, should I, be music clanging. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a, no, it's quite and, heavily you know, and dramatic. Part of that response, Lily, might be might be to my son's work to see oh, I love his that. his things have become much more dynamic since he cho he's chosen to use color, mm -hmm. um, and so we, uh, contrary to the popular belief, he received no instruction from me ever. I mean, he was there in the studio since he was a baby. Uh, he was in the environment, but he and I never sat down and, and said, "Well, you know, this is how you do this." So really, his his growth and um, as an artist is really his own street. That he that he exists in, so but we do love to talk about the philosophy of art and what does it mean, what are the implications of it, rather than 
you know, things the so specific. The nitty gritty yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And so for you, the philosophy of art is pretty much on the creative side. And you're, are you working towards anything specific? Are you, what, what's in your heart when you get up to go and, and start working on a piece? Oh. Well, there's a real, I mean, I don't know if, if uh, any of our listeners um, have ever worked with uh, color pencil, except when they're younger or something, but it's incredibly time-consuming. And you must have a vision prior to. It's not sketching out. This is, you know, the brilliant gems. Well, I I'm, uh, I do hope that they they are they are polished when they're completed. That's certainly the standard I aspire to, and uh, I think that you're really uh, astute to point out the uh, the association with youth and uh, youthful expressions of creativity with uh, with the medium of colored pencil. I have I, as I have uh, slowly matured a little in my process, I have realized that almost everything. I, I am inspired by is connected to uh, in, in, in some way or another my experience in, in childhood, mm-hmm. and I was uh, lucky enough to be exposed to a lot of a lot of interesting things that show up in my work now, like science and and uh, history, as as my dad was saying. Um, but I did have uh, a, a teacher actually that loved colored pencils. Uh, oh, okay. Mrs. Perez, you're you're great. And <laughs> um, the. Uh, uh, the sort of revisiting of that experience in my in my current work um, is uh, is an interesting challenge. As, as you say, it's it's a medium that is in some ways unforgiving. Um, it's uh, definitely rigor rigor insistent, and mm-hmm. you know requires that sort of attentiveness. Um, I will probably move on to other mediums in my life, but. Um, I, I like to say there's a colored pencil-shaped hole in my soul. It's a it's a medium that really suits my my kind of character. I, I don't mm-hmm. I don't mind the focus and the the, the attentiveness. There. And also, but you had the same when you were working with graphite too. I mean, it's just as time intense. It, it's it's true. Yeah, I I would say I would say uh, very wisely. I decided to move to a medium that's even less <laughs> forgiving. Uh, <laughs> On that note, um, I, I'm I I know that you'll join us in a, in a couple minutes after the commercial break. Um, we have uh, it's coming up right now, uh, but please stay tuned and we'll continue our conversation with Summer Mill Manning owner Vicki Manning and artist Greg and John Mort. Thank you. Hi there. Welcome back to Art Watch. This is Lily Gaylor and my guests in the studio today are Vicki Manning, owner of Summer Mill Manning Gallery in Greenville, Delaware, artist John Mort and his son Greg Mort. But I'm sorry, I goofed that one up. Anyway, both of whom have a beautiful art show called New Horizon, showing at Summerville Manning Gallery through December 23rd. Welcome back, and please correct me on that. That was just <laughs> stupid, and it was a typo. Um, anyway, hey, Vicki, I was wondering if you could talk about the show. It must be pretty exciting to have you, um, both of these uh, gentlemen, uh, showing at your gallery, and you have an event coming up tonight. And can you talk about a little bit about the show? Well, I, I'm thrilled that, I mean, Greg and I were figuring out it's over 30 years that we've been working working together um, and, and showing, and Greg never fails to uh, present something new and different every show. We never know what's coming with him. And this time, um, and then John joined in a few a few shows a year. It's, we, we do them, we've been doing shows together once every two years in November since the late 80s. And John joined us um, a few shows a year. I believe this is our third, our our third, third outing together. Third? Yeah. I think it's fourth, maybe. I think it's our fourth outing together. <laughs> Good. Thank you for making me yeah. up. I appreciate it. <laughs> but it's irrelevant. I mean, it's just important that we're, we're all together. But um, this year, uh, what Greg did, uh, he worked in watercolor for a long time, then oil, and now it's, this whole show is oil. Mm-hmm. And there are two 80 by 80 inch oil paintings in the show that are fa- just incredible. You can walk into them. And I think that, as I said, there's, there's always something new going to happen in his work. And that scale, it's, but they're part of a whole series of four that he did. And we have two on either in the gallery. So I think. One it, of them sold, though. Yes. But it's I there. Our, our that is amazing. It's, um, <laughs> Yes, it uh, really was. Yeah. but the show stays intact until the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. That's that's why if you go to see it, <clears throat> you'll see the entire exhibition, and we end it twenty the twenty third. So any that are bought for actual Christmas presents could be you know oh, gifts can be gone. Yeah, because art is actually the best gift uh, for anything, the best. particularly for the holidays. <laughs> it is the best. And what's what's really unique and 
most wonderful about the Summer Room Manning Gallery, at least for me, is that it's as if you're stepping into a, a quiet, light-filled, beautiful, small museum, but you can buy them. And that is a wonderful thing, to be able to purchase one of these things and keep them in your collection forever. I'd enjoy them if you don't buy them. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's open to the public. Yes. Oh, is tonight's event open to the public as well? Yes, it is. We're doing an event tonight that is uh, a panel with Greg and John and Ellen Ferretti, who is the director of the Brandywine uh, Conservancy in Chad's Ford. And I thought it was a unique opportunity because uh, the Brandywine has a museum and a conservancy under one umbrella, and that's a, a unique situation. And Greg and John have a foundation, the um, Art and Stewardship, which is also about uh, conservation, environment, and a worldview combining with the arts. So that's what the panel's about tonight. And Ryan Grover, who's the curator of the Biggs Museum in Dover, will be moderating and, and, uh, and asking questions. And uh, So it's a good opportunity to, to hear some really bright minds discussing art and um, the environment and our uh, sustainability in the world. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, no, I shouldn't say that, I'm joking. Um, (laughs) The tie-in between our our stewardship of our natural environment and the arts. Um, Can you explain this a little bit? Sure. um, We like to think of images as having great power, you know, uh, uh, paintings in caves existed before language really, and uh, so there's always been a tremendous um, history of the power of imagery. So um, the Art of Stewardship, which we started actually 10 years ago, this is our 10th anniversary, we uh, try to encourage other artists to use their voice, their creativity, to um, convey the message about the fragility of the earth. And these are things that we all understand today. We know that we live on you know, a finite uh, globe in the vastness of space, and we need to take care of it. And one of the things that artists can do is um, subconsciously plant that notion. You know? And uh, so we've worked with universities, um, organizations like conservancies, mm-hmm. and we've tried to encourage artists to give of themselves. Uh, I remember one artist said, uh, well, what's in it for me? And I said, well, you, uh. get, you get to help save the world <laughs> and I was sincere about that and you know we all have to contribute we all have to do our part so um, being stewards uh, of the earth via whether it, it could be poetry it could be music uh, in my case it's it's imagery mm-hmm. um, it's something that I can contribute and add to um, the whole notion of being good stewards of the earth You've also worked with NASA in the past, my understanding is. That's correct. I, I was see that as and altering one's worldview in many extraordinary ways. Well, absolutely. Uh, back in the early uh, days, the early 60s of the manned uh, mm-hmm. space program at NASA, uh, someone had the, the wherewithal to to realize, hey, we should record these events through the eyes of, of poets, musicians, mm-hmm. uh, uh, painters. And I was very lucky to be part of a, uh, some of that, that That's project. That's really cool. Yeah, really, really awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Yep. That must have changed things forever for you. It, uh, it did, yes. It is. You know, solidify them. Well, to, to, to be there and see see the launch, a historic launch of uh, Sally Ride, the first American woman to go into orbit. You saw that? On, on, cha- on the Challenger, the first flight of the Challenger. Cool. Um, to see that firsthand, you know, and this is one of the things that, um, like Vicki was saying, you know, come in and, and you, you were saying, Lee, come in and see the work because there's something you get firsthand that you don't get uh, through a, a postcard picture or a TV screen. So to be at something like a launch is, is, is life-changing. Or to see um, a Vermeer painting that you've mm-hmm. only seen a picture of in the flesh. To see, the, to see the paint, right? Yeah. There's something that, that that is not... You can't swap that for the real experience. Yeah. And there's something about some of the, uh, the larger pieces have a vastness to them mm-hmm. that I think is, is fascinating and alluring. Um, there's very much of the majesty of the world in your paintings, but... Um a little mystery too. Well, certainly, <laughs> certainly scale, and then the, the the large works that that Vicky was so kind to talk about, those were inspired by a trip actually to the Czech Republic in Prague. Huh. Um, there was a, a famous artist that lived in that time who did. Uh, they're called the epic Slavic uh, paintings, and they're they're literally thirty by forty feet. And to see those there. things, yeah, <laughs> to see those those pieces Muka. of work are yeah are oh, they're just Muka. overwhelming. And I thought. Wow, that says something about scale, doesn't it? 
Oh, those are enormous. I don't yeah. know how. Well, he must yeah. have had a ladder. Yeah, exactly. The Sorry. physics, you know, <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it's an amazing contrast to think about my son's work, which is which is, you described as beautiful gems. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Um, just think about the, the physicality of the difference of those two approaches, just mechanically. It's sort of overwhelming. Also, if you think in that particular place where they're showing that, I think that's the only, I mean, it has to be, a pa- it was an old palace. I mean, how else can you, those yeah. things are huge. I really have no idea yeah. how and, they are. And then they were rolled up during the occupation of the, of the Soviet Union because they, they were afraid they would have been, um, because they were kind of political, uh-huh. you know, and so they, they kind of hid them. Huh. Yeah. Only recently been unrolled. I didn't know that. Yeah. I know that we have to, I was arguing with the person about the fee. There's a separate fee for entering that room, but mm-hmm. then I was realizing well worth, that I was well really worth, quite ridiculous yeah. in arguing about the fee. Um, that's funny, though, that you should, so how, were you both in Prague? Did you get it? No, this is an adventure that you undertook, but you, you were quite moved by it, and the, the results of, the results of that, uh, that experience have been, have been fascinating to witness, uh, the transformation in your, your process and the, the push forward that you've, you've undertaken to, uh, to investigate the experience of, of creating art at that scale. It's, it's really cool to see the results. Have you ever thought of um, going big? Uh, well, I think you can tell <laughs> you. I actually, not a colored pencil. Not a colored pencil, no. No, no, please. I feel bad for you. No, we've, uh, we've actually, as my, my dad had, had kind of inferred a little earlier, um, we've been on sort of uh, possibly influencing each other without realizing it on, on opposing trajectories. My work... Uh, I, I had graphite drawings that were up to eight feet in length. Oh length. my gosh! Um, and then, I'd love to see those actually. I, mean, I, I stand by them. They're 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 certainly a, a different a different uh, part of my my portfolio. Um, and uh, I think that the the sort of the your, oppo- your first two shows were with those. Yes, the, the larger yeah. scale pieces were 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 for, were for those two shows. Um, and so the the sort of the the, the Converging and, and passing each other in terms of the, the this transition of scale, um, I, we, we've expressed a sort of uh, a dim awareness that we might be influencing each other. <laughs> but I love the fact that you're not, a lot of artists will talk to. This is this is my course. This is what I do, um, and it seems to me that you are both people who look constantly for inspiration, willing to change, willing to plunge forward if it's something that you're passionate about. And um, both in the natural world around you, but it seems also then from other artists as well, and other millions. So I have a comment to make on that. <laughs> that was what I was saying. Every two years, I never, it's, there, a new show comes along and it's always new and inventive. And John, for example, was doing these large eight-foot Graphite, mm-hmm. and now the colored pencils are what, 16 inches or yeah, 18? Yeah, I think the biggest I mean, one is about two feet square, but the smallest one is probably eight overall, inches. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, just just the you know the change is is remarkable. So coming to see a show every couple of years, you never know what you're going to what to expect. But I love it that as a gallery owner, you know what to expect that it'll be full of integrity and quality and be beautiful. Always. Yeah. So it's a, must be a pleasant surprise for you too, and beautifully hanging of the show. I, that's Thank difficult. You. I mean. Well, I know they're father and son, but still, it's a different. They're different it, palettes. It, it, is a, it is a challenge to ha- hang any two artists together, and I have to. I have to say that uh, my experience, long experience with Somerville Manning, mm-hmm. they've al- always been very welcoming to new ideas, mm-hmm. and they've always represented us beautifully. And, and that's something that may or not, may not be rare in the artist gallery relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we when we're there at the gallery with with Vicky, and also it's very interesting because the the gallery has always been sort of owned and operated by women, which is a really wonderful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, we're like very a family. Very that. No, no, very it, smart it, of you. Yeah, and actually one of the one of <laughs> thirty six gra- years. Thirty six years. Yeah, one of the greatest compliments I ever received was from someone who was familiar with my work, didn't know me, and they said, "Oh, I thought you were a woman." And I thought, wow, what a sensitive comment, and what a what a what a compliment. Greg so, is an unusual. Well, they didn't name. know. They did. They, <laughs> they knew. They knew. <laughs> the, they knew. The, they knew the work, but not the but not the name or the artist. And so I thought that was really interesting. So I've had the great pleasure, and now my son has the great pleasure of working with people that that represent you so professionally. 
and um, in a friendly manner. Also, there's something about Summer Mill Manning in that, um, you know, the show is presented beautifully, of course, and then with these openings or these gatherings like she's having today, uh, this evening, uh, you get a chance to meet the artist, um, which further um, furthers the um, art experience. Um, but also, if you're really interested, she knows you so well. Um, I saw pieces from your earlier career, and that was cool. And it actually made me go back and look at some of your current work. It's just there's a conversation going there and um, an interest in just the evolution of you all as artists, and it's always beautiful and it's intriguing. I and it makes you want tra- more. As translators. You know, that's, our, that's that. our job is to translate what, what they're doing. Because we're the ones that are standing in front of the public all the time. You know, they're working in a studio, and except for, the, like, tonight and, you know, a couple <laughs> events. But, you know, we're the ones that are out there uh, communicating to to people what it's about. It's vital mediation. We, we appreciate it. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful to have had you as guests today on Art Watch Radio. Uh, tonight, again, could you talk about the specifics of the event? I know that their show is going to be at some Summermill Manning through December 23rd. It's on right now. You should go on the website to see the hours and so on of the gallery. Uh, but tonight's event is? Tonight is at, it's at 6 o'clock, and uh, as I said, it's a panel with Greg, John, and Ellen Ferretti, the director of the Rainy Wine Conservancy, uh, moderated by Ryan Grover, who is a curator at the Biggs Museum, to discuss uh, uh, arts and the uh, environment and... Um, Perfect. I think it sounds very exciting, and it also give, it'll give you all a chance to talk to uh, these gentlemen a little more. Um, anyway, besides stopping at the wonderful uh, Summer Mill Gal- uh, Manning Gallery this week, remember this coming Friday is First Friday, and there are gallery openings and art events throughout our area, including the opening for an exciting show at Mala Gallery in Kennett Square with artist Carl Kerner and Mark Dance. This is the final show for this wonder- wonderful gallery, and I know all of us will miss Stella Scott and Mala Gallery very, very much. Please stop by Mala Gallery to check out the terrific new show, buy some art for the holidays, and wish Stella and her family well as they move on to their new home in Georgia. Next week, please tune in to our Watch Radio 1520 on Wednesday at 1, from 1 to 1.30, December 5th, for Vicki Manning, right here, who will be the host. And from guest to host, I can't wait to hear her um, host Art Watch Radio next week. For past podcasts of Art Watch Radio, go to my website, www.leelygaylor.com. And thank you very much for being with us today, and thank you to my guests. You guys are amazing. Our pleasure. <laughs> it was great. Thanks, Lily.